Today we are going to look at pressure and we're going to focus on the large scale or the macro scale. So this is the part that you can see. Later on we will get into the micro scale. So to begin, let's review. Macro scale are the things that we can see, we can observe with our senses. We don't need a lot of high-tech equipment to look at the macro scale. The micro scale is the particle scale or what is happening at the particle level. This gives indication with um, observations we can see it in the micro scale. So we are first going to start looking at the big picture and then later we'll discuss the particles of pressure and, and what is going on there. So pressure on the micro scale. Pressure is the amount of force exerted over a given area. A familiar unit for pressure is pounds per square inch. This is probably what you've seen most with um, PSI for your tires, for a car, or even bicycles. Um, it's literally how many pounds of force pushes on a s one square inch of surface uh, inside of that tire. So we can increase the pressure by increasing the force. Um, we can decrease it by making it bigger so we would have less force in there. All these things we are going to look at through um, lab. Atmospheric pressure. So I'm sure that you've heard we have low fronts and high fronts coming in with the weather. Um, all of this relates to pressure and pressure can change our weather, our temperatures, uh, so we're looking at the atmospheric pressure is the amount of pressure exerted on an object by the atmosphere above it. So if I draw like a little person over here, we have all of these little particles and they are pushing down. I mean, they're, they're mass. They have they have some bit of weight. So they're pushing down on this person and this person feels the pressure. If you were to go, say, up on a mountain, the pressure up here would be less because there's less atmosphere than if you were down here at the bottom. So this person down here has all of this pressure pushing on him whereas this person only has this much pressure pushing on him. So um, things like weather or elevation um, but for the most part our atmospheric pressure generally stays fairly constant. Um, there's just slight jumps here and there. So units, units for measuring pressure. Um, there are four big ones. We have uh, pounds per square inch, which is the English unit of measuring pressure. So it would be like saying gallons, inches, feet, yards, um, that English system. We are going to focus on the metric system which talks about kilopascals. You could also have pascals which you know there's one kilopascal equals a thousand pascals. So it's the same system as centimeters, um, liters, and um, grams, all of those. Uh, we also have atmospheres. One atmosphere is at room, um, one atmosphere would be, you know, right next to the ocean at sea level. We also have what's called millimeters mercury or TOR. These two are similar. They're the exact same thing, just different names for, for that. And I'll show you where we come up with that here in a second. So kilopascals, the standard metric unit. Uh, atmosphere, this is convenient because at zero degrees Celsius and sea level, it's equal to one. In Indiana, we are uh, around um, like 0.98 generally atmospheres. 
So a very small change, even though we do have a little bit of elevation here. And we, um, so we're not too far off, and there's not a big difference there. Millimeters mercury is this one. It's units based on the amount of liquid mercury that can be pushed up a column by the atmospheric pressure. So the pressure pushes down onto a big container of mercury, and that mercury is pushed up a tube that has little markings on it, and how far it goes up, that's millimeters of mercury. So converting between them, we are going to use, it says the factor label method, but we can still use our proportions, and these are our proportions. So if you were given the example of um, 3 ATM equals how many kilopascals, you would set it up as 3 ATM over X kilopascals equals 1 ATM over 101.3 kilopascals. So the same, we're still looking at the same conversion problem, but these are our conversion factors instead of 12 inches in one foot or 60 seconds in a minute. Um, we are now looking at, at this set of conversion factors. Okay, this is a barometer, and this is where we get the millimeters of mercury unit. So what, what a barometer does is it is a reservoir of liquid, in this case mercury, um, with a glass tube, and this vacuum in here means that there's no particles. There's no air particles, there's no mercury particles. It's literally empty and so there's no pressure in here pushing down there's none so that's not in there we can even just erase that part the pressure is all out here so it pushes down and pushes down and this forces the mercury up the tube so the more pressure out here the higher we're going to get up into this tube. Because there is no air and no particles in the tube, the liquids can be pushed up, and then the tube has these little graduation marks, and those tell us, we can read these to say how much atmospheric pressure there is. So looking at this, um, the question comes up, why do we use mercury instead of water. Well, to get this same experiment to work with water at room temperature, it would need to go up the height of a two-story building. So we would have a column of water, and then, of course, we would need a big dish of water that the atmosphere can push on and push it up and the water level would be up here at the second story of a building. So it's not really useful to use something um, with a low density like water. We use something like mercury that has a very high density so when you push on it, it doesn't go up very far. All right, next we have what's called a monometer and this is like a barometer but the monometer is um, you used for very small uh, labs, and you collect some gas in this little bubble here, and it has an unknown pressure, and that's what we're trying to figure out. There is a fluid inside this U-shaped tube, and so the pressure from here, the little particles, will push down right here, they will push down on this tube and force it up the other side. So, um, and we can make, take readings on both. This one is open to air pressure. So air pressure is pushing down on this side. And the difference between pressure on this one and pressure on this one will give us the pressure inside. 
So that you will, um, we will take some more practice working on this. Here is a little close up. So on this one, we can see that we had pressure in this tube that came out. So there were all these little particles that were pushing down here. When the pressure is greater on one side, the fluid will rise. The difference between the two heights is equal to the difference in pressure um, if we know the atmospheric pressure. So that's a big thing that we have to know the atmospheric pressure. Um, and we can take the change in pressure and calculate the pressure inside. So pressure 1 equals pressure 2 um, plus the change. And pressure 2 is the atmospheric pressure. The change is equal to H2 minus H1. So really what I like to say is not H2 and H1, but inside minus outside. So, and by inside, I mean inside is closer to that ball and outside is the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so we have to do an example. What is the pressure of a gas in a sealed part of the monometer? So we're looking for pressure one. Pressure two we get from the room and that is P of the room, pressure of the room. Sometimes we like to say that that says prune, but it doesn't. So pressure of the room we say is 730 millimeters mercury. The height inside is 84, outside is 127. So if we take 127 minus 84, we get 74. The pressure of the gas is this plus our change and we get 804 as the answer for pressure 1. Okay, barometers are used for measuring pressures of very large samples, gases such as Earth's atmosphere. Um, we can put these on other planets, so really we're looking at planet atmospheres. Um, <clears throat> we can put them inside uh, buildings, inside um, different kinds of tanks that are very large. So the point is this, is that it's very large. Monometers are used for measuring pressures of smaller samples of gases. Um, so like in our mass and change lab when you put the Alka-Seltzer tablet inside the water, carbon dioxide was released if we had the ability to, so this is our beaker with the water and we put the little tablet in and it started making a gas. If we were able to seal it, we could use a monometer to um, collect this gas and hold on to it uh, so that we could test it. So this barometers are really for large things, monometers are for small things. Um, so liquid mercury is used because it is such, it is much heavier than most liquids and therefore cannot be pushed very far up the tube if less liquids were too, or if less dense liquids were used the glass tube must be much, much taller. So this is what I was talking about with the water. Um, atmospheric pressure can push a mercury height up to 760 millimeters, which is not very far. Like, I mean, it's basically like, um, pretty tiny. So we're talking about, you know, maybe something about that height. Whereas much less um, 
if we look at water, it would be 10,000 millimeters. So we're looking at something 760 millimeters or 10,000, which is basically two story building. So pretty, pretty tall. Um, so this is pressure on the macro scale. We will be doing labs that talk about pressure on the micro scale.